Montana trooper Wade Palmer is home again after leaving the University of Utah Hospital after receiving treatment there for nine weeks before leaving for the airport. Trooper Palmer's wife and a Montana Highway Patrol colonel gave their thanks. We still have more therapy in the future, but due to all the people that I mentioned above, the future is brighter today than when we first landed here in Utah. Officials from Montana say they are thankful for the support, the love and the care of the hospital staff and the Utah Highway Patrol. Trooper Palmer was not able to speak today. He was shot three times in a deadly shooting in Missoula. Happening now, set up underway in West Valley City for the 9-11 Never Forget Memorial. This exhibit was welcomed earlier today by a procession from Salt Lake Community College to Centennial Park in West Valley. Many students lined the streets to see that escort happen. Agencies all over the valley participating in the welcome. It is the first time ever the memorial has made a visit to Utah. The exhibit includes steel beams from the towers and recordings from first responders. It will be in West Valley City until May 29th. A new report says fewer American adults are dying from cancer, but more are now dying from heart disease. The new research comes from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Cancer deaths dropped 19 percent between 1999 and 2017, but heart disease deaths saw a 4 percent jump from 2011 to 2017. Experts say that heart disease upticks are related to obesity. Well, thousands of patients could now be at risk after mold was found inside Seattle Children's Hospital operating rooms. The hospital working to get in touch with 3,000 patients who they say could have been exposed. Officials are investigating how that mold got there in the first place. Patients with non-invasive surgeries are at a lower risk for contracting that infection because of the mold. Vermont's attorney general now suing one family that he says is at the center of the opioid crisis. He claims the Sacklers, who are behind Purdue Pharma, the maker of OxyContin, personally oversaw the company's deceptive marketing of opioids. By suing the Sacklers separately, we'll be able to keep pressure on the most culpable family members, uh, even if uh, the filing in bankruptcy court should come uh, from Purdue as a corporation. The state attorney general there suing Purdue back in September, but according to the Washington Post, the company is now considering filing for bankruptcy. They're also facing a federal lawsuit from more than 600 cities. The Sackler family is calling the lawsuit a, quote, misguided attempt to place blame where it does not belong. Well, some of your favorite trails at Zion National Park will not be open for the upcoming Memorial Day weekend. Observation Point is closed because of a landslide there. Park rangers warned some of the roads can be impassable when wet and rain and snow in the forecast. The Narrows closed because of snowmelt and the Hidden Canyon Upper Emerald Pools and Cayenta. They're all closed because of landslides as well. Also closed this weekend, Cedar Breaks National Monument. Officials say the area received more than 20 inches of snow. That's in the last few days. And because of that, the park and the State Route 148 will not be open to visitors this weekend. They're not sure when that will be able to reopen, but they're working hard to clear all of the snow. Congressman Ben McAdams is co-sponsoring a bipartisan bill that would invest in infrastructure improvements at Utah's national parks. Bishop, Stewart and Curtis are also co-sponsors. McAdams says this legislation would allocate money from offshore oil and gas leases and be put towards the National Park Service maintenance backlogs. Meanwhile, the new U.S. Interior Secretary says this does not plan to make changes to any more national monuments. However, David Bernhardt says that decision is ultimately up to President Trump. The White House recently said in March that further action on monuments remained under consideration. Former Secretary Ryan Zinke also proposed to shrink two monuments in Oregon and Nevada and change rules at six others. Senator Mitt Romney wants the Senate to focus on natural disaster funding. He and a group of senators are now looking to reform the budgeting to include disaster spending in regular appropriation bills. Romney says it is long overdue and that Congress should start planning ahead for natural disasters. Well, right now it is time to talk weather. It is definitely a soggy spring we're seeing. Is anything about to change or more rain, Lindsay? Uh, more rain is on the way. It has been unusually wet. Fifth wettest spring on record, if you can believe it or not. And it's been unseasonably cool as well. Over the past five days, our average high temperature has been 58.2 degrees. 
And if you compare that to normal, we should be at 73. So that shows you just how cool it's been. And that cool weather is planning to stick around for the next little while. We might start to see our temperatures going up a bit as we head toward the holiday weekend. But even with that warm up, we will still be below normal for this time of year. We've got this slow moving storm working its way across the state. Scattered showers with snow in the highest elevations. Core of this storm is sitting across southern Nevada. With a low pressure system, you get a counterclockwise flow like this. So that means that we're getting an easterly flow here across the Wasatch Front. You can even see that with the showers in place. They're moving from east to west and coming up and over the Wasatch Mountains. Well, when this scenario sets up, we get easterly winds here across the Wasatch Front, especially the northern Wasatch Front. Winds right now are not too bad, but they are going to pick up in the next few hours. I've stopped this here at 11 p.m. Notice how those easterly winds have kicked in 25 miles per hour in Centerville, 34 in Farmington. We are generally thinking that sustained winds will be between about 20 and 35 miles per hour, but we could see gusts as high as 50 miles per hour, and that's why that wind advisory has been issued. As we head toward tomorrow morning, they begin to calm down. This is at 8 a.m., still breezy out there. By tomorrow afternoon, they're back down below 10 miles per hour as those winds start to uh, slacken up just a little bit as this low pressure system works its way up and over northern Utah. Tomorrow morning for your morning commute, scattered showers. Those will continue on again, off again into the afternoon and evening hours. And then this low pressure system starts to exit as we head toward tomorrow night. But it's not totally done with us yet because it's actually going to split into two pieces. And this part is going to be our next weather maker. It's actually going to work its way down the coastline of California, which will pull in some slightly drier air for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So maybe a few peaks of sunshine but then it works its way right across the state for Memorial Day. So here's the forecast for Memorial Day. Just those pop up showers and thunderstorms, mainly during the afternoon and evening. Temperatures a little bit closer to normal. For St. George, few thunderstorms tomorrow. After that, you dry out. Memorial Day, though, we have introduced a few showers and thunderstorms once again. Temperatures back up in the 70s starting Friday. For the Wasatch Front, wet again tomorrow. Then we just get those pop up thunderstorms Friday through Sunday, Memorial Day as well. And we keep that pattern going into Tuesday and Wednesday too. Heidi. My garden needs some sunshine, Lindsay. I know. I would love some sunshine, but maybe a tiny bit here and there Friday through the weekend. We'll take whatever we can get. Thanks, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. If you're a fan of the jazz or just basketball in general, you might be happy to learn of Salt Lake's newest designation. The details up next.